If I told you to draw a camera, you'd probably draw something that looks like this. A rectangle with a prism mesh viewfinder on top, a large circle on the front for the lens, and of course, a shutter button. But when we look around us, most cameras actually look like this. A rectangular, flat slab with a few small circles in the corner. So what is it about this camera in our imagination that we don't want to let go of? I'm Becca, welcome back to Full Frame. Okay, I'm talking about this because today Nikon is releasing the Nikon ZF. It's all covered up because it's not out yet, but this is the Nikon ZF. We're in New York City, I got one hour. Let's go. It's a full frame camera. Here's all its specs. And images from the ZF, they're great. It feels like Nikon has finally hit its stride with color science and mirrorless devices. Nothing feels overly sharpened or too saturated. But none of that is really what matters in this camera. It's about how it feels in your hand. The camera is heavy with metal parts. It's got a loud clunk of a shutter sound. And most of the controls, such as ISO and shutter speed, are changed with sturdy metal dials. There's even a dedicated black and white filter switch that can produce high contrast black and white images with overexposed highlights and deep blacks for a timeless look. And the camera's got the look with a, a black leatherette, a Nikon written across the top, and of course, a plethora of dials. It is everything that the Nikon ZFC, Nikon's APS-C Vintage S camera that launched two years ago, wasn't. Where the ZFC was plasticky and lightweight, the ZF feels robust and powerful in your hand. And it just feels far more like a tool than a toy. And this is Samsung's S23 Ultra. It is the best camera you can get in a smartphone here in the US. It has a 10X telelens that is sharp. It can take 8K video. And with a little help from portrait mode, photos from its 200 megapixel f1.7 main lens look like they could have come from a much larger camera. So if this exists and it can be your phone too, why would anyone buy a standalone camera? All cameras do the same thing. They capture an image, but it's not what they do. In fact, I rarely post or print or even edit the photos I take with them. It's how they feel. And these varied experience are exactly why camera nerds own so many of them. On the other hand, if you've bought a phone in the last few years, you've probably experienced some level of disappointment. Outside of foldables, the experience of using a phone is no longer all that different from the experience you had with a previous device. It's still just a slab of metal that is uncomfortable to hold for long periods of time, can make calls, send texts, and take photos. And in some cases, those photos are great, but rarely is the process of taking them enjoyable. On the other hand, taking photos with the ZFC is so satisfying. I only had two hours with a pre-production model, but I did not want to let this camera go. All right, is this thing in focus? Check out all those controls. The shutter clunks in both the audible way and the physically feel it in your hands way. The dials click with intention. They aren't flimsy or easy to accidentally move. And the body looks beautiful in your hands. It's an ode to the first Nikon F-Series camera produced in 1959. The ZF has some quality of life touches that make using it a lot easier than say using an actual vintage camera. And, and my favorite is that it now has a touch to focus setting where you can keep your eye to the viewfinder and use your uh, rear finger, either your right or your left, you can set either one to set your focus points. I love the setting and the screen is incredibly responsive. Now, the ZF still doesn't have, you know, the, the body prediction settings of Sony. It's not the smartest autofocus settings, but it was plenty snappy for leisurely shooting. This camera's not perfect though. While I didn't have time to test essentials like battery life or high ISO shooting at night, um, I did experience some overheating issues when shooting 4K video. It was about 90 degrees outside. It was as humid as New York City gets in the summer, which is to say it was very humid, but I only shot about I don't know, three or four one minute 4K clips and the camera was already showing a heat warning. Though it's safe to assume with this form factor that this is not a video first camera. There's also only one SD card slot and oddly a micro SD card slot, which you don't see very often on a full frame camera. And out of the box, its hand grip is too shallow to be held all day while on a job. Though Nikon will be selling a hand grip accessory post launch. The ZF is not a workhorse. Instead, someone would buy the ZF for the same reason someone might buy a vintage camera. To have fun and to love using it so much that it inspires them to use it more. And that's not to say this camera can't produce great images. It can. But its experience lends itself far more to the lovers of craft than the folks who are chasing a paycheck. Where our phones have many abilities, the sole purpose of the Nikon ZF is to take a photo. And it is well tailored to provide the best experience when doing that. 
It's not made to spend eight hours in your hand like the more professional Z8, and it is also not made to shoot long video clips. But if you were to draw the camera that provides the most classic camera experience, well, I would draw something that uh, looks a lot like the Nikon ZF. This is so bad. <laughs> okay, I went in, I don't draw this. The Nikon ZF is gonna come in six colors. My heart soars for the green one, but I think the orange one looks a little bit like a toy, just my personal opinion. And it will be available starting today for this price. As I'm filming this, there is not final pricing, but th this is the final price. <laughs> Next step for Nikon is gonna be creating lenses that look really good on the system. There is like a 28 millimeter and a 40 millimeter right now that have like a nice ring around them, like a silver ring, gorgeous. But outside of that, Nikon's lenses all look really new. And yes, you could get an adapter and put old lenses on it, but then you're gonna have like the adapter on there. So I think some, some sweet primes that are on the smaller side, as opposed to their 85 millimeter that's like massive, would be so sick. 